Hello and welcome in today's video. Today we will be discussing about how to dispense a progressive addition lens or what are the key points to consider whenever you are dispensing a progressive addition lens. So in this video we will be looking at how to select a particular frame which is good for a progressive lens, what are the parameters which are to be taken into consideration, how to take a PD and how to find the proper fitting height for a progressive addition lens. So let's start with the video and see how all this is particularly done. The first key point to a particular dispensing is selection of the frame. So as we know that it is a progressive addition lens, so you have to ideally select a particular frame. The first key factor is the frame shape. So it is always better to go for a pentagonal or a box type of a shape which will have all the areas covered because if you take an aviator shape of frame for progressive, high chances that the reading area which is slightly nasal offset can cut out and that could reduce the amount of visual field which is required to see clearly. The next is your frame depth. So frame depth is nothing but it is from the point where your centration is marked or the pupillary center is marked up till the lower rim of the frame. So if it is inadequate, the amount of area which is will be covered will be less and that would lead to lesser amount of field of vision. Whereas if it is around 24 mm, it would give you the complete field of vision which is required for a progressive addition lens. Third is the frame size. It should not be very much big or neither it should be very much small. It should be optimum for the patient such that it fits proper, properly and it covers all the region. So if you take a very large shape, what will happen? The amount of abrasion which is present in the periphery will come into the lens and when you take an optimum shape, that extra part of your astigmatism which is present will get cut out and would result into a better optics with the same lens. It is always advisable to go for a metal frame rather than a plastic frame. Reasons because a metal frame is quite more adjustable when compared to plastic because here you have nose pads which can be increased or decreased into the height which will raise or reduce the size or rather the depth of your frame. Also you can easily give a pantoscopic tilt to the frame or reduce the pantoscopic tilt because it is easy to change the shape of your metal. But whereas in plastic, as it is a saddle type of bridge, there is no point that you can increase or decrease the, your bridge length or rather what we can say the bridge height. So that is quite difficult to adjust in a plastic frame as compared to your metal frame. Next is adjusting the frame that whenever you are taking a frame for a progressive fitting, always first adjust the frame before taking any measurement onto the frame itself because if you take the measurement without adjusting the frame the measurements will not set properly and that would lead to a faulty prescription or rather a faulty dispensing of your progressive addition lenses. So always check the nose pad angle such that it sits properly onto the nose and also the facial wrap or what we can say the three point touch should be proper such that the patient's has your proper fitting of the frame. The next point is your having the pantoscopic tilt. A progressive addition lens, the frame which you will be selecting for it should have a pantoscopic tilt because the pantoscopic tilt will increase the field of near vision or rather the near field of view as a straight frame will reduce it by 5 to 6 degree whereas when you increase it or rather give a pantoscopic tilt that will increase the near field of view by around 5 to 6 degree or more than that depending on the pantoscopic tilt. Next is your vertex distance. Your frame should not sit too much away from your frontal plane of the cornea what is called as the vertex distance. It should not be too much higher or rather more vertex distance because the closer your lenses are more wider field of view you will get. So if I take the lenses away the field of view which I get would be reduced but if I take it closer to my eye the field of view which I'll see through the lenses will increase. Next is your monocular PD. So this remains one of the most important point in dispensing a progressive because if the monocular PD is not taken properly 
as we know there are peripheral abrasions or rather what we can say the unwanted astigmatism which is present so if your pd is not taken properly and it is too much in or either too much out so the eye might see through the area where your astigmatism is present and that would lead to a blurry vision or a improper vision so taking the monocular pd is very much important as we all know that right and left both eye might differ slightly into its pd it is not necessary that it will remain same in both the eyes so we also know that the position of the lens or the placement of your progressive lens should be accordingly your monocular pd because it has a different field of view for both right and left eye so it can be done either with the help of a pd rule and your torchlight method where you put a pd rule right in front of the patient's eye and then you ask the pati uh, patient to look from his right eye to your left eye and you close your other eye so that there should not be any parallax error and then you see at what measurement your pupil is coinciding onto the scale and you get the monocular pd the other method is rather a more better method in terms of progressive and that is your pupillary pupillometer so in pupillometer what we get is you have a dial which is present here which has different length or rather we can say fixation point one is infinity one is at your particular distance and one is at near 40 cm so what you can do is you can take distance as well as near pd into it so you ask the patient to look into the pupillometer and then one one eye you will be occluding and ask the patient to concentrate on the fixation target which is inside and then you will move this dials until and unless the mire is matched with the patient's corneal reflex so once that is done this dial will show you the exact reading so you can see here 61 that is 29.5 and 31.2 whereas when we took it manually it was 29 and 32 so your pupillometer gives you a more accurate reading as compared to the other methods because in your manual method there could be a parallax error or either an error because of the patient's movement or either your height or other thing which are not adjusted properly the next is marking on the lens insert now this is again a very important point because after this marking you will be taking this particular frame and correcting it over your lens cut out or rather what we can say the verification is done so once you mark this point how you do it you sit right in front of the patient and you sit at a one hand or a complete one hand distance around 2/3 or a 1 meter then you ask the patient from his right eye to look at your left eye and you close your right eye so that there should not be any parallax error and with a felt with a felt tip marker or a very fine marker you will mark the pupillary center such that it will be a point corresponding to your pupillary center onto the frame once that is done you will repeat the same for the left eye where you ask the patient to look from the left eye to the patient to your observer's right eye and you close your left eye and mark the same way again once the marking is done we can identify what fitting height is to be given as we know there are different fitting heights and as per the fitting height the corridor size would be taken into account so if you have a larger fitting height the corridor would be larger and that would be a, a easier progression or rather a very gradual progression whereas if your corridor is short or rather what we can say the fitting height is short the corridor would be very much shorter and that would lead to a very continuous progression in the power so the corridor or rather what we can say the fitting height is measured from the center of the pupil till the lower edge of your frame and that much amount of millimeter is taken as your fitting height so how do i verify that whatever measurement i took is correct or not so once the measurement is done the pupillary center should coincide with the fixation cross which is present here and after that all the areas which are to be covered within the frame that is your distance optical circle and your near optical circle should be within the frame within your patient's range so if it is too much low that means that the marking is not proper or either the frame selection is not proper and that would lead to a faulty dispensing so this should be properly aligned so that your near reading area is well within the frame and it is not getting cut out whereas if you see here in this point it is not coming properly your either some part either you have taken a very big frame or either the measurement is wrong because the reading area is going going quite an easily and which is not acceptable here so this is a proper fitting which is to be done once the verification is done next is we will see how your lens is being fitted all this data will go to your 
a lens manufacturer who can also fit the lenses so this is an automated lens fitting machine so here the pneumatic tool takes all the uh, ad measurement of the frame of the shape and then the lens is cutted out with a diamond wheel into the proper shape this diamond wheel itself has a v groove as well as your supra groove into it which will give it so now there is a v groove or rather your bevel edge which is given here once this bevel edge is given this will be fitted onto the lens after heating this plastic lens and again the fitting height is properly measured which was given by the optician to the manufacturer once that is done a quality check is done so that the lens should not come out of the frame and then it will be given back to the patient next is your on eye assessment once you get the lens fitted onto your frame you should not clear do the clearing or rather what we can say clear the lenses directly of the marking what you should prefer is first ask the patient to wear the frame and check if the markings are corresponding still to your patient's eye so the cross or the fitting cross should exactly correspond with the patient's pupillary center and the near reading area should be just below it not very much in or neither very much out so that will give you an idea that the lens is being fitted properly and it should give the patient optimum vision also check if the lens is or rather the frame is fitting straight and there is no tilt or rather there is no misalignment and even the pentoscopic tilt is properly in place after that the assessment should be ask your patient to look at the distance vision chart and read all the lines so that you can confirm your distance vision is proper with the lenses and then ask the patient to look at a near point so that he can see the near vision clearly so if these two perfectly goes well then your patient is quite satisfied with your progressive dispensing and then with the normal instructions for usage and the do's and don'ts which are generally explained to the patient once that is done the patient is free to go thank you for watching this video patiently i hope this would make you understand how to dispense a progressive addition lenses to a patient do subscribe our channel and thank you for watching this video again thank you and goodbye